Okay, this is going to be pretty brief and then I'm going to um, upload a couple more videos that are about specific techniques, but this is just to generally introduce you to um, street art and to some of the strategies utilized and then also to um, just see some of the work by different famous street artists from different periods uh, in history. So, whoops, sorry. Blech. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna look at some of the artists. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of things that you can use when you are doing street art. This is not me advocating for you to go do street art. This is technically vandalism and you can be arrested something I know from personal experience. So, um, you know, don't necessarily <laughs> go out and try these things. Um, but if you want to try them at home on the outside of a building that you own or have permission, then by all means. But don't go get arrested and then blame it on your art teacher, okay? Not what I'm saying. Um, so one technique that I talked about a little bit with fiber arts is yarn bombing. We looked at work by an artist named Olek who, um, did a yarn bomb of the Charging Bull statue. Um, stencils are probably one of the most familiar forms of graffiti. Uh, the artist Banksy uses stencils, so we'll look at some stencil work and examples. Stealth stencils are pretty cool. I'll explain what those are. Tags, wild style, we'll get into. Um, wheat paste is a different technique that you may not think you're familiar with, but you've probably seen it. Uh, stickers, sculptural intervention, seed bombs, moss graffiti, guerrilla gardening, these are all things that people do. Um, sculptural intervention is um, something where you create a sculpture in a site specific area uh, where there isn't art already and you're installing something without permission. A seed bomb is where you take um, flower seeds and you put them with some soil and then you just drop them or throw them into different public areas so that flowers grow there. Uh, some people do this with vegetables too. Moss graffiti is where you put moss and soil in a blender and then you kind of paint it onto particularly brick walls or concrete walls that are damp and then the moss will grow in the shape of whatever words or whatever you paint it on in. Uh, guerrilla gardening is the same thing as seed bombing, except you're just planting actual plants or trees or things in places that you don't have permission to plant them. Um, I think I go into the rest of these, but we'll, we'll come back to them. So here are some street artists to know. So just some of their names, and then we're going to look at them a little bit more specifically. Banksy is the most famous street artist. I imagine most of you have heard of Banksy. He's British. Not a lot is known about him. He does not share his real identity with the world. There have been documentaries about him. Um, and he predominantly uses stencil art, which is where you cut out a stencil and then spray paint through the stencil to make the shape, okay? A lot of his works are quite complicated and require diff many different stencils stacked on top of each other. It's kind of like screen printing, if you think back to the printmaking lecture, except you're doing it out on a wall with usually cardboard or illustration board stencils. Um, a local artist who does great stencil work is uh, John Worcester. He doesn't do it out on walls without permission anymore, but you can buy canvases of his work. Okay, uh, Taki 183, this is one of the earliest uh, examples of graffiti art. So Taki, um, was an artist who was working um, predominantly in the subway system uh, in New York and would just do what's called tags. So when you see an artist who just uses their name, in this case this guy's name signature was Taki 183, um, and are just tagging things like trains or subway cars or light posts or whatever with their name, that's just called tagging. So they're just putting their name somewhere. And this was in the early 80s, so this is kind of when graffiti really was getting going. And so um, Taki 183 was kind of all over the New York subway system. And it's not real elaborate work. It's just, he was one of the first people to do this, uh, this idea of tagging. Shepard Ferry, Shepard Ferry is very famous because um, his image of Barack Obama with hope below it was used in the 2008 campaign quite a lot by um, 
President Obama before he was President Obama. So Shepard Fairey is someone who uh, does stencil work where it's a layered stencil with different colors to um, kind of show variance and depth. And he's made quite a few um, pretty famous images that are regularly used. Invader, uh, Space Invader is one of the earlier graffiti artists. And he's interesting because um, He's kind of a sculptural interventionist, except instead of three-dimensional sculpture, he's using um, mosaic. So he's using tile, and he originally would put the little Space Invader guys, the little 8-bit Space Invader guys from the um, 80s video game, and just stick that mosaic tile like into place on walls all over the place, and he would make these things. And he's since branched out and does different kinds of... Um, other imagery, some of it, other things from video games, some of it things like, this is obviously the, the dude from The Big Lebowski. Um, so he does different kinds of things, but all in this kind of pixelated 8-bit sort of um, mosaic technique. Uh, Black Larat is someone who was definitely very influential to Banksy. So he's a, a French stencil artist who started working uh, in the 80s, I believe. And I, I think he's been still making work. I don't think he ever really quit making work. So he's someone who was certainly uh, quite influential to Banksy because he does these just stencil works in black, then occasionally he'll have a couple of other little colors for accent like in the flower there. Keith Haring. Keith Haring is an extremely famous artist. Um, he uh, very tragically died quite young um, of a complication related to uh, HIV. Um, so he was a very active artist it, with um, the group ACT UP, which was a group that tried to spread awareness about the dangers of HIV and AIDS and bring light to how little government inf intervention and support and help and um, medical funding and things were being provided for research at the time. So he uh, did things that look like this. His work has become pretty iconic. You see it used all over the place. Um, in decorative like decor designs and in different kinds of um, pop cultural sort of references. Uh, so he did this kind of work freehand um, with spray paint. So he wasn't uh, using a stencil, he's just drawing these things with paint, right? Jean-Michel uh, Basquiat. Basquiat is one of my favorite artists and he started as a street artist and then he became a very famous pop artist. He and Andy Warhol were good friends. Andy Warhol kind of discovered him. Um, he had a lot of mental health issues and was sometimes living on the street. Uh, but he would, um, he was first known as SAMO, S-A-M-O, and that stands for, uh, pardon my language, but it stands for same old shit. That's what um, his tag name originally as a street artist meant. Um, and then he also, uh, one of his signature kind of uh, icons was this crown, putting this crown above um, things like this dinosaur that he has here, but he would just put the crown in different kinds of works on the street. So he did work uh, on the streets in New York, but he also became a very famous gallery artist. Pretty much any museum you go to that has a contemporary wing, you can walk in and find a Jean-Michel Basquiat. Um, so he's very, very famous. Um, this is my favorite contemporary graffiti artist. This is Swoon. Uh, Swoon is a Brooklyn-based artist as well. She, um, uses wheat paste, which is a technique. I'll post a video about what wheat paste as a technique, but it's basically you take, um, you print your material. So you, it's, it was first just used for putting up flyers and posters and things. So you print your material and then um, you put this mixture on the back that involves flour. That's why it's called wheat paste. And then you can just roller it and stick it to surfaces, um, which was used a lot for bulletin board, type postings and things in big cities and then artists saw this and were like oh we could do something else with this and so uh, wheat pasting became um, kind of taken uh, over as a, a, a subversive technique used by street artists so this is Swoon's work she does a lot of woodblock style work um, that's very linear and graphic and then she um, cuts out the cuts around the shapes and the silhouettes and then we paste them onto walls. She also, also does three-dimensional installation work. I saw an installation of hers at the Brooklyn Museum 
probably close to 10 years ago now. Um, but she's a super interesting artist. She does a lot of great stuff. Barry McGee. Uh, Barry McGee is another artist who is pretty famous um, for both freehand kind of uh, tagging and um, wild style writing. Um, but he also does uh, some wheat paste and he does some more commercial looking work for galleries. Margaret Kilgallen. Um, she died rather young, I believe, but she's an artist who also did work with wheat paste and then she would do these kind of really, very illustrative type works like this where there was a lot of um, text used in the work. Cause, uh, Cause is a really interesting artist. So Cause has done mural style um, painting work in street art and then also has done these weird sculptural interventions where he'll blow up these um, soft sculpture inflatables in spaces. He also does hard sculptures. Um, he also does kind of layered stacked relief sculptures. He's uh, a commercial artist now. He's signed um, with the gallery and sells his work uh, and mass produces some of it as well. But he started as a street artist. Uh, Claire Rojas is a muralist um, and street artist who does a little bit more, her work's interesting to me because it's kind of more um, abstracted. Uh, so it's freehand spray painting and she also uses um, latex paint that she rolls on as well. But it doesn't fit into your typical, um, it's kind of unexpected. It doesn't really fit into the typical sort of graffiti styles that you see. Retina, I think, is super interesting. So he does this kind of work where he's sort of um, creating symbolic language. Um, so he does these kind of works that look they look a little bit like cuneiform. Um, and so he does this kind of mark where it's like using calligraphy, almost calligraphy-like um, kind of text-adjacent pattern work. Uh, Futura, Futura became pretty famous a few years ago. He is, uh, he was making work back in the 70s and 80s and he has recently started making um, work that's like a more traditional kind of work for galleries and things instead of just uh, wild style painted uh, tags and things. Um, so he uses a lot of different aerosols and things in his work and he does installation work as well. Nikos, um, Nikos is mostly based in the West Coast. I used to live in Oakland and there were quite a few of his works out there, but he's known for doing these things that are sort of um, fantastical anatomy, I guess. So it's, he'll have um, a figure, a lot of times it's a rodent or an insect or something, but here we have like a Ninja Turtle and it'll be like coming apart, like being dissected and showing the inside of what's going on. And these are quite large scale works on buildings. Um, so those are just a few artists. There's so many graffiti artists. There's tons and tons of great graffiti artists that you can follow on Instagram now. The world has changed a lot where you can see their work in lots of different kinds of places. Um, and I'll also post a couple of videos about some of the techniques that these artists utilize.